Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. We've got a fun fact filled video today all about Hoka, their 2023 lineup, what the shoes are good for, what they're bad for, all the facts and figures to get the right shoes on your feet. So sit back, relax, let's dive in to Hoka 2023. Let's get this video done. So today we're going through six of the mainline Hoka road shoes. We'll be talking about the Rincon 3, the Clifton 9, the Mac 5, the Bondi 8, the Mac X, and the Rocket X as well. We're gonna go through my likes and dislikes for each shoe, and most importantly, what they are good for. And yeah, I do know there are a few other very niche products in the range that Hoka have. Today, we're just gonna concentrate on the main line ones, the ones that the vast majority of people are going to be buying. And just before we start, guys, I bought these shoes 100% with my own money off various websites here in the UK, so we can give you that completely impartial, unbiased, view of the shoes. Right, let's get stuck in. The first one is the Hoka Rincon 3. So here we have the entry point into the Hoka lineup, coming in around about 110 pounds. All the other dollars and euros prices are taken from the various Hoka websites around the world, by the way. Now we're talking about a 29 mil stack at the back, five millimeter drop over all, 236 grams. Very, very lightweight shoe. There's no carbon plate in this shoe. Also, the purpose of a shoe like this is just your lightweight daily training. You can do lots of different runs in this. You do some up-tempo runs, you do some sessions, 5K 10Ks up to half marathon, so I wouldn't want to run a marathon in a shoe like this. Talking about my likes, it's very, very lightweight and it feels fast on your feet. You really feel like you have barely got a shoe on there. The price and value is fantastic. At that sort of just over hundred pound price point, you've got some great value there for the versatility on offer. And finally, fantastic lockdown. Love the upper here. Your feet are feeling really nice and secure in the shoe. What I don't like about it, so far the durability hasn't been fantastic on the shoe. Just getting a little bit of extra wear and tear and looking at some other reviews and what people are saying durability is a bit of an issue so i'd gauge around four to five hundred miles right let's move on to its bigger brother the clifton nine Right, so the Clifton 9, I did have this shoe earlier this year, but I've since sold it to buy some other shoes. So this is coming in around about 130 pounds here in the UK, 32 mil stack at the back of the shoe, giving a five millimeter drop overall and 312 grams. Very much Hoka's classic daily trainer, the shoe to do it all in, and there's no carbon plate in this shoe. So the purpose of the shoe, who should be buying something like this? Well, someone looking for that one shoe to do it all, essentially. A shoe that is pretty good, at all sorts of different distances, and different types of runs as well. So why might someone buy the Clifton over the Rincon? Well, it's just gonna last a little bit longer, a little bit better for some longer runs, some marathon distance training runs and running marathons in it. It's a lot more durable and can go the distance. The foam in it is just a little bit more suitable for your longer training runs, basically. Now, what I really like about the shoe, the positives, the comfort and the lockdown are really good. I love the flare at the back of the shoe, giving that Achilles a really nice snug fit around there. It's a little bit heavier than Rincon, but it's still a lightweight shoe. It really is a joy to run in, you're not carrying around a big load of bulky weight with you. And the breathable upper is fantastic. If you're running some hotter climates, good airflow through there. What I don't like about the shoe is just the EVA foam that they're using this. It's a little bit old. It's just not very responsive. It's not much fun to run in. But apart from that, an all round really solid daily trainer. Right, let's move on to the Mac 5. <music> So here we have the Mac 5 coming in around about 140 pounds, 29 mil stack at the back, five millimeter drop overall and 260 grams. I'd say this shoe is basically your everyday speed shoe. A little bit lighter than the Clifton, a little bit more fun. We're now adding a layer of Hoka's ProFly foam in here, which sits on top of a regular layer of EVA foam just below it. A little bit more poppy, a little bit more responsive, a little bit more fun. There's no carbon plate in this shoe. It's pretty stiff, but not too bad. So who should buy a shoe like this? Well, someone looking for a fun speed shoe, for someone to do some up-tempo runs, some speed sessions, maybe some non-important races as well. Now, what I really like about this shoe, it's so much fun, it's poppy. The addition to this profile foam in here just brings the shoe to life. It's super responsive, great lockdown fit throughout the shoe, and it's so smooth to run in through that transition as well. A fast overall good option. In terms of my negatives about the shoe, the outsole durability is gonna have some issues with this. 
maximum three to 400 miles. And given the high price point versus the lack of miles you're gonna get out of it, that is a bit of a negative. But yeah, great, fantastic, fun shoe to run in. Quickly guys, if you are finding this video useful, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and answer today's question of the day. What is your favorite Hoka shoe you've ever run in? And also, what brand would you like to see us do next here on the channel with that whole complete lineup? Right, thanks very much guys. Back to the video. Moving on, we've got the Bondi 8, which I also had in earlier this year. Very different shoe from anything we've seen so far. Max cushion, super soft, plush ride in this one. Coming in around about 150 pounds, 33 millimeter stack at the back, four millimeter drop overall, and 380 grams, very heavy. <laughs> and finally, there's no carbon plate in the shoe. Hoka did make a carbon plated version, called the Bondi X. It was pretty awful. Less said about that, the better. So who should buy a shoe like the Bondi? Well, someone looking for a very comfortable shoe to do a lot of long distance, your big miles. Ultra runners love this shoe. It's super plush, super squidgy, super soft. You can get some big miles done while looking after your body sensibly. In terms of my lights, it's pretty responsive given just how soft and cushy it is. As I said earlier, it is super comfortable. The lockdown in this is really nice. It's had no issues with any sort of blisters or hot spots or anything like that. And my final like is the surprising amount of versatility you can do in the shoe. Yes, you're not going to be doing your big races in it, but if you want to go out for a nice long marathon training run, get up to marathon pace, this shoe will be fine and it will look after your legs really, really well. What I don't like about the shoe, it's very, very heavy. 380 grams is pretty crazy on the weight. It's also a little bit on the narrow side as well, although you can spec it in some wider options if you have particularly wide feet on the Hoka website. Moving on to the Hoka Mac X, a brand new shoe. Hoka are calling an everyday speed shoe. This sent me back 160 pounds here in the UK. 39 mil stack at the back of the shoe, five millimeter drop overall and 300, 300, three, yeah, 307 grams in total weight. There is a plate in the shoe, it's a P-Bax plate, and yeah, not too stiff, one of the more lighter weight plates as they go. It is a little bit confusing why they called this the Mac, because it's so, so different from the Mac 5. In terms of the plate they've now added, it's a lot bulkier, a lot heavier. It's essentially a speed tube, some of your faster sessions, your up-tempo runs, and just an everyday race shoe as well for the vast majority of people. So who should buy a shoe like this? Well, someone looking for that plated daily trainer, basically. One that's gonna be comfortable for your long runs that you can use it in combination with like a dedicated all-out carbon racer, or just a shoe that you can use for all your everyday training. So talking about what I really liked about this shoe, it's super stable and very responsive. I love the rocker shape at the front of this shoe here. It's just such a smooth, comfortable, joyous shoe to run in. Really gets you up on your toes really nicely, gets your legs circling underneath you. It's really, really good fun to run in. Very versatile at all speeds, just jogging along, recovery pace in this shoe, really comfortable. Easy pace, steady pace, rep pace, tempo. Whatever you do in this shoe, it's really nice. Took this all up the way up to about my 5K pace, and it is just singing at all sorts of different paces. And finally, just a really good, secure, comfortable lockdown fit. What I didn't like about it is it was a little bit small. I would have ideally got half a size larger, but it was okay, I got away with it, but I would recommend sizing up half a size. And yeah, just a little bit on the bulky side, a little bit heavy, a little bit bulky, but overall, really good, fun shoe to run in, one I'm definitely gonna be keeping into my rotation. Right, let's get on to the all out carbon plated racer, the Rocket X. Right here we have the Hoka Rocket X, the fastest shoe here coming in at 220 pounds. The most expensive as well. 36 mil stack at the back, five millimeter drop overall. For me, coming in at 255 grams. This is very much a road racing shoe and there is very much a stiff, super stiff carbon plate in this shoe. So who should buy a shoe like this? Well, someone looking for a super fast, but also quite cushioned and soft super shoe that's a genuine contender against the likes of the Nike, Adidas, and ASICs of this world. Really good at all distances, 5Ks up to full marathon and potentially even longer than that. Talking about my likes about this shoe, yes, it's soft, 
but really responsive and super, super fast as well. It's really stable in the corners. If you're someone that really likes a fast park run, some twisty courses, yeah, really good stability in the corners and a really good confidence inspiring lockdown. And I love these colors of this shoe. You put it on, you just feel fast, you wanna go fast, it just gets you in a really good mood. All the testing I've done it so far says this is gonna be a fantastic race shoe for a lot of people coming up in the races this autumn. What I didn't like about the shoe, I had a few issues at the back. There was just a little bit of excess material in the heel, but it didn't really cause any issues. It was just an interesting observation. And I personally just would have liked a little bit more ankle uh, padding at the back of the shoe, but these are real nitpicking things here. Overall, fantastic shoe. Looking forward to doing a lot more miles and some races in it coming up as well. As a little side note, you can get the Hoka Carbon X version three. For me, this is just far, far better. And I think the Carbon X is just one to avoid. I've tested version one and version two. I'll link to those videos down below. The three is very, very similar as well. If you've got a particularly wide foot and you want an all out race shoe, then by all means have a look at it. I say really it's one to avoid and stick with one of the shoes we've talked about in the video today. Talking about a couple of different rotations, if you just want one shoe to do it all, it's gotta be the Clifton. If you've got a bit more money, then get something like the Mac X. If you're someone that does a lot of walking, a lot of shop work, you're on your feet all day, the Bondi 8 will have you covered for that. And you can get it in an all black version as well, particularly good for people working in retail. If you want the training and racing ultimate package, the Mac X and the Rocket X. If you want to sort of train and race a little bit more budget friendly, something like the Mac X and the Rincon will have you covered for everything there. Right guys, hope you enjoyed the video and this style of video reviewing the whole sort of brand. Let us know what other brands you'd like to do this in down in the comments and what is your favorite Hoka shoe of all time. Please check out the website benparks.com. You can get the best running hats, singlets and training plans to help with your running. Next up, we've got the Nike version and also the Saucony version of this video. So please check those out. They'll be along next. Keep on working hard guys, keep on getting done. And we'll see you very soon in the next one.